Hi guys, Andreas on Mainliner with another impromptu uh, video. <laughs> An impromptu a uh, video. <laughs> it's a video. It's impromptu. I have stopped doing like weeklies and you know I just do them randomly whenever things happen, whenever I have something to say. And this week I have something to say. So what I wanted to say is that sometimes, sometimes you want to find a record and you go out to the record shops and you don't find them and you go online and it's like you know it's sold out and you have to wait for the next repress if that is happening and maybe you know you can only find it in eBay in exorbitant prices and all that kind of stuff so this time around I have been very lucky I have I went to the record shops wanted to buy two things which I think are semi-popular at this uh, point in time, maybe, maybe, because usually I catch on a wave like after it's like sort of swelling. <laughs> I don't catch the wave necessarily when it's really low. Um, and um, I was uh, really lucky. I, I found, I went out and I found what I, what I wanted, which is great. And I also found some, uh, some additional stuff. And I went record hunting for used stuff, and I was lucky there too. And I also got some things from Amazon. So that was not luck, really. It was just me pressing the button. But, <laughs> some good stuff. So, let's start off with the easy ones. <clears throat> the easy ones are the Amazon stuff. I got these like a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this is a reissue of uh, Don Cherry's uh, Brown Rice. And this is uh, from the 1980s, I think. You see, the, see what I did there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that means I'm old. No, it's 1976. Bloody hell. I always thought that it was uh, from the 80s for whatever reason. I mean, the cover looks very 80s, doesn't it? I think... Now again, I think I would probably be wrong about this. Uh, is that the original version from 1976 was in Italy, and then it was reissued in the U.S. with this cover, and that was in the 80s. That's that's what I think. That's maybe that's why I'm confused about it. Anyway, it's a really great record. It it is jazz but not exactly. It is It is a little bit uh, subversive and I guess that's Don Cherry for you. Not that I know, you know, I'm very familiar with everything that Don Cherry has made, but yeah, there you go. It's a really good album. And very excited that we got the last, um, last record out of this band's um, discography. Uh, this kind of punishment uh, from New Zealand. I have the other two albums. This is uh, their last album, I think. What does it say? Yeah, the final LP. Yeah, recorded, uh, released in 1987. This is a lot. Whereas the previous LPs sounded a lot more like this heat. They had this kind of melancholy and they had like very bizarre endings as well like they, it felt like the songs ended abruptly this is like proper in the flying nun kind of thing not poppy it's not poppy at all it's very punky it's very lo-fi it's very not lo-fi uh, the recording is fine i mean you know it's not like anything amazing uh, but it's lo-fi in um character if you like very very scratchy guitars and things like that so this is really good i really like these guys check them out um, this album is very different to the other ones but all of them are really good so there you go now that was amazon then i i was showing another album sometime ago i'm pretty sure i have now, ah, this is the wrong one. That's what you get when it's impromptu, yeah. See, it was the same color. How, how could I have known? 
So I, I was uh, showing this one. So this is Elias. This is the second album, uh, and it's called what is it called? Uh, Liars, Liars. So second album. Uh, Liars are from the U.S. Uh, they are a garage band. They were active back in the early '80s, uh, late early '90s. Uh, no, early 80s. Yeah, early 90s. I, I think that they broke up sometime in the 90s, early 90s or something. At least I think that their last album was back then. So this is from 1986. And they're a garage band, basically. And they were heavily influenced by the 60s sound. And they have that kind of feel to it. And I listened to this album. I, I don't know why I, I knew them. I knew them, obviously. But and that's why I bought the album. But um, when I heard it, I was like, "Whoa, this is amazing!" And I had to get more of them. So I went out and I bought this one, which is their first album, "On Fire." This is uh, this is on Ace of Hearts, so U.S. Uh, original, and this is a uh, French original, which I think. I, I have a feeling that um, the French one is the original one, like, you know, that was the New Rose, yeah, 1984, and yeah, I'm going to get more of uh, their stuff, so that's it, I mean, pff, what can I say, it's garage, it's really good, it's really fun, it's, it has that 60s tinge to it, they allude to other things like you know their garage bands are very re, a remix version of a band I mean, they're doing remixes in, in in a sense but a rock and roll remix so you find things like uh, you know stooges riffs and you know all sorts of things are being reused and it's like oh yeah this is cool let's use it and we'll put our you know our twist on it and it's really good and you know it has but um I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to say. But yeah, this is uh, Garage, 60s inspired. Uh, you know, at the time that it was not really cool to be to sound like this. And yeah, this is a great album. Really, really good. Um, uh, how much should I go? Oh, yes. All right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was thinking, I was saying something about the Garage. And I've been having a, you know, um, I've been listening to quite a bit of Garage. Now these records I bought like some time ago. I should have shown them earlier, I think, but I haven't because of reasons. <laughs> so, you know, I'm an old man, you know, it's like, uh, you know, I forget things and, and on top of that, you know, being old, I like simple things these days. I don't like over, overtly complex things. When you were 20 years old, I don't know, you went out, you know, and you went and saw like movies, black and white movies from Finland that, you know, there were like two people that in a room never talking to each other and it was like high art and they were like, yes, I feel so good about it. But these days I don't care about these things. I like... I like, you know, easy digestible things and the liars are something like that and the cynics. So yeah, the cynics, pure gar garage, rock and roll, you know, does what it says on the tin, 12 flights up, another, another, uh, garagey, garage, uh, album from the cynics and I've got some CDs. <gasps> CDs, blasphemy, blasphemy, but I did get some CDs, one of the CDs that I got for the princely sum of three pounds was this, the Fallouts, now, hang on, have I shown the other Fallouts one, so I have this back in Greece, uh, I have the album, and um, the record shop I went to, the, at some point they had a copy of the album, I think it was released once on Estrus, um, and for, for a good price, it was like, I don't know, £12 or something like that. And 
was deliberating to buy it, although I already had a copy, which is really hard because it's a copy in another country, right? And I, I remember this, this album very fondly. Uh, so when I saw the CD, I was like, you know what, screw it, I'm getting it. It's, uh, it's really good. Here I come another hit. It's, uh, I mean, look at them. Look at those guys. It's like, like the Rolling Stones or something. From the, it's straight from the 60s. This is from 1993, 93, 94, whatever. Can't think. Don't know. 1993, 1993. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's pure fun. I mean, that's, that's what garage is. It's fun. It's fun. It's easily digestible. It's, you don't have to think about it too much and just go for it. Have I shown the, the album, for the, the other album? Hang on. Um, have I shown this? I don't know. So this is their second album. And it's equally good. It came out on Sub Pop. So, yeah. On, on that day I found this one and uh, this one on vinyl and I was like, should I? I, got, I, I just got this one. It's, yeah, it's fantastic. And this is fantastic as well. It's really funny because, you know, when the, the, the first song, Here I Come, it sounds like it's uh, you're playing on 45. <laughs> it's like, oh, I need to change uh, the RPM. No, uh, it's a CD. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, I also got uh, The Mortals. Uh, this one, a Ritual, what is it? Ritual Dimension of Sound, uh, 94. Five of them? No, 92. Estrus. And uh, this one, which is a soundtrack by the Mortals, uh, Bulletproof 94. Now, I cannot remember for the life of me whether I have these two or whether I had them on my want list. I will uh, visit home uh, in a few days, so I will be checking out. Also, the other thing that I found out is that the record shop that I got these one these these from, three pounds each, by the way. Um, they they bought a collection of pretty much the whole Estrus catalog on CD. So yeah, I'll be I'll be visiting there. <laughs> Another CD that I got uh, from there. Sorry about that CDs. Ooh, bad. That's so naughty of me. Um, Another CD that I got there, uh, from there, uh, is, is a CD that you cannot find, the ori originals probably are like completely, just, yeah, way pricey, I, I don't think that I would, I would pay that much for, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's a kind of price that you don't want to pay for a CD, for an LP, um, unless, you know, loaded. Um, uh, and our, the reissue is out of print and it's a bit on the expensive side but I found the CD for three pounds and this is Primeval Smoking Bats at the, Com at the Comptons and this is a private press proto metal doom uh, album from I don't even remember where they're from these guys I want to say that they are from the US cannot remember. This is a 2011, it has no information whatsoever. And um, yeah, anyway, I think that you know, if, if I were to place it somewhere, early 70s, really good Doom, uh, Doomy proto metal. So, there you go. If you like this kind of stuff, enjoy. Maybe you've discovered something new. Have a go at it. Uh, it's it's for people that like. Um, I forget the band. Fine, never mind. I also got this one. Funny, it was, they had one copy for five pounds, one copy for three pounds. Same thing, exactly the same condition. I got this one. This is the heads under the stress of uh, headlong dive. I didn't own this on any format. And uh, yeah, it's from 2005. I really like the heads. Really good psychedelic, modern psychedelic music. Really fuzzed out. Really good stuff. And finally, and I got Weld. 
by Neil Young. And now, this is a live album, double CD, came out in '91. And what's in, I'm I like Neil Young. I like Neil Young like anybody else that is into rock music, right? You sort of have to, <laughs> you know, <clears throat> if you're into rock music, you sort of have to go through the Neil Young phase. You need to listen to some Neil Young. Whether you like him or not, that is a different question. Although, having said that, I mean, you know, On the Beach and The One That Has Cinnamon Girl, these are really good albums. Harvest, I can take it or leave it, you know, that kind of thing. I mean, you know, behind me you can see Zuma, that's another one that is really good. This one, though. It's very interesting because because of the sound. I was listening to this uh, yesterday, and I was listening to "Blowing in the Wind," which is a Bob Dylan song, obviously. Um, and the guitar sound, the guitar that's very opportune because I have it here. The guitar sound. If you took out the drums and the singing and whatnot, you would end up with this. This, this has this guitar sound. A bit more sped up, but essentially that's what it is. It's, it's unbelievable how this sounds. Uh, yeah, really good stuff. Enough of the CDs. Oh, I've done a transgression, I know, but there you go. Um, yeah, oh, you, you stuff. Yes, yes. Let's carry on with you stuff. So, um, the day that I got these CDs, I also got uh, two albums, uh, from one from the want list. It's been on the want list for a while, but I haven't been able to find a proper, like, you know, a copy in good condition. Not that this is in perfect condition. It has scuffs and things like that, but at least the cover looks clean. It's Bong Water, Power of Pussy. Meow. Uh, this came out in 2000, and I want to say... Why did I say that? You know what? Uh, somebody should tell me not to mention any dates on things because I will inadvertently get them wrong. And some people, th these things are important. Uh, to me, not so much, but there you go. So yeah, it's a duo, uh, these two guys. And, oh, now I notice that there's a scratch here. Oh, bloody hell. Well, there you go. It's like, I, di I didn't notice it when I was in the... I don't know if you can see it. There's a bit of a scratch. This is a great album, by the way. Um, regardless, uh, I had found a, another copy that was more beat up. And it was scratchy as hell. And I was very disappointed. And this is an um, album that I discovered... Um, on Spotify, and specifically the, the song, uh, where is that? Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Nick Cave Dolls, <laughs> which is like, um, it's, I don't know how how to describe their music. They're, they're definitely indie. There's a lot of spoken word, and there's a lot of groove to it, and it's good fun. It's, it's, it's a little bit... I don't, I don't want to say the word psychedelic because it's not psychedelic, but it's good fun and it's a really good album and you should check it out. Bone Water, Power of Pussy. And I also got this one, which I already own a copy. This is a reissue, an early, early reissue from um, SST. When I saw it, I was like, oh bloody hell, this is, this is an original. It's not an original, unfortunately. Uh, originally released in 1982, SST. And this is an SSD copy. It's an old copy, 80s copy, no barcode. And yeah, I have a, the issue from, I don't remember, like 2004, I want to say. And interesting feature, it has two shrink wraps. One is the original and the other one is probably somebody put it in at some point, and I'm taking it off. Look at me, I'm taking off shrink wrap to reveal more shrink wrap. Ah, oh, much nicer, isn't it? Yeah. 
Yeah, it's in it's in good condition. the The price was all right, you know, for um, you know the item. And it's a great record, and it's very interesting because I was listening to it uh, yesterday. And you know, if you, usually people associate Sonic Youth with I don't know Daydream Nation or um, Goo, uh, that's another one. Uh, definitely, like you know, one of the big ones that they did. Like, uh, no, was was Goo was in Geffen, and I think Daydream Nation was still an independent. Record, record company um, but yeah I mean washing machine these kinds of things this is the kind of sound that you associate Sonic Youth with but this is the you know the, the birth you know the, the birth but this is the archetype basically and it's very interesting to hear it because it has like it has it has a definite Sonic Youth sound but it's a lot rawer than uh, than the other than the other albums, way roar, and you can hear the the influences that sort of made Sonic Youth what they are because you can hear the minimalism, you can hear uh, Glenn Branca in there, you can hear I don't know John Cage in there, and the guitar sounds very sound very very industrial, very mechan mechanical in like you know the the tempo but very uh, that industrial sound it's it's very very interesting so i don't think that you know this is like canon uh, sonic youth if you like you know people would if they recommend it would be like oh yeah listen to daydream nation which is fantastic and it's like probably has become my favorite album from theirs but it is essential to understand where they're coming from and you can also hear it, hear them in their primordial and original, original sort of form, if you like. Uh, but it, they, they didn't like let it. They weren't. They didn't let down that sound. They just evolved it and they made it more indie and they made it more popular, I guess. So yeah, Sonic Youth first album. There you go. And um, as I was saying earlier. I was uh, I was lucky. Um, I went out and I wanted to buy some things, and I went out and I found those things. What are those things? I will show you in a bit. <laughs> so uh, I went uh, to my favorite. Uh, I've said this before. Uh, my favorite um, London record shop uh, for new records. That is. Because for used records, I, I have my local, and it is really, really good. I've told you about my, my local uh, record shop. It's fantastic, because every Saturday they have new stock in, and it's like record store day. It's crazy. Good prices, good stuff. Anything goes, really. But, yeah, this is where I got my the Sonic Youth and the Bong Water and the CD that I showed before. So I went to my favorite record shop, which is uh, called... Oh, what's it called? <laughs> uh, it's an Arthur Russell, Russell sort of uh, world, world of sound, world, world of echo. Sorry, world of sound. Old, senile. He plays vinyl. What do you expect? Uh, so yeah, I went there. Um, I went to a couple of record shops actually. I went uh, to Rough Trade, thinking that oh, we'll find what I want there. No. And I had always in my mind that I would find these, the, the two I went for specifically, at World of Echo for whatever reason. I ended up having like half and half. Uh, I went to Flashback London and I went to World of Echo. I found one album in uh, World of Echo and one album in uh, Flashback London. But I got more records on at World of Echo because I liked the guys. And the first one I got is Craig Leon, Interplanetary Music uh, Volume 2, Inter Anthology of Interplanetary Folk Music Volume 2. Um, if you don't have number one, you should. Drone, fantastic, experimental, but listenable. Very important. Please note, listenable. You can actually listen to it. It is a little bit out there, but it's not something that you know would impede your listening. It's like, Hell, what are they trying to do there? It's like just noise or whatever. 
no no it's really good music now this is sealed because I just got this today so yeah I wanted to get this one and I did uh, another one that I wanted again from uh, World of Echo uh, for a stab uh, this is called The Call an African music ensemble or people's artist or people's ensemble I come up with things don't listen to me you know whatever it doesn't matter uh, yeah, this is one that I wanted. Um, yeah, uh, there's also another one which is with the Pan African Orchestra, something that's like a triple LP or whatever. And I want that too at some point. But you know, how much? How many records should I buy in a day? You know, I've already have like I've got a lot, a lot to listen to. So yeah, I got this one. I think I've sampled it, I think I liked it, I don't remember anything, I think, well, it's spiritual jazz, yeah, right, meow, 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 and in that place, that's, that's a good thing about going to record shops, yeah, you go to a record shop, you're like, oh, I find all these cool things, and then I see things that I don't recognize, and I'm like, what is this, what, what is this I'm, I'm asking you, and it's inspiration. It's like, oh wow, but you know what? All this is cool, so this should be cool as well. So these guys, they have um, a section which is like stuff they like. They have a section that is like uh, post-punk, and they have some tasty-looking records there. Very tasty-looking records. Very interesting. Very intriguing. And, you know, if I had the space, which I don't, and the money, which I don't, uh, I would probably just get that the whole box. Just thank you very much. I'll buy these. But I had to, to choose one. And for whatever reason, I don't know why, I got this one. So, <laughs> yeah, I was like, you know what? Uh, all these look, look cool. So this is Crack Cloud. Uh, what's the name of the band? Is it? Yeah. Cr oh no. Yeah, Crack Cloud. Uh, Canadian post-punk apparently. Um, this compiles the first two EPs of original material in one LP, and I have no idea what it sounds like. I don't know what it is. It's a completely blind buy. Like you know, I just picked it up. I'm like, yeah, I'm going for that one. Thank you very much. If it's if it sucks, it sucks. It's fine. You don't need to know exactly what you're buying sometimes. And these are the ones that I went for. This one I got from World of Echo. This is the Viagra Boys. They're from Sweden, I want to say. Uh, this is their first album called Street Worms. And this is, um, this is one that is a little bit uh, tough to, to find these days, I think. Um, it's probably out of print at this point in time. Uh, you will have to wait for a repress. And the Viagra Boys, what do they sound like? They sound like... Uh, they have a very... They have a lot of similarities with the LCD sound system, but they are more rock and roll than they are electronic music. They have a wicked sense of humor. Uh, they take the piss. Um, but they're funny. They're not like, uh, you know, mm, it, it works. It's, it's it's really good. I mean, the first song down down in the basement. So <laughs> <laughs> I won't spoil it for you anyway. It doesn't matter. Check out down in the basement sports, shrimps shack, and uh, yeah, it, just check these out. I mean, you can find them on Spotify, whatever. And yeah, this is a really good album. This is on the, the same kind of spirit as uh, Emil and the Sniffers. So yeah, it's a spirit, not the sound. It's more LCD sound system. These guys, the Emil and the Sniffers are more like traditional punk, I guess. And this one is, um, is it from, yeah, no, it's from this year. Yeah. I don't remember where they're from. Fontaine's BC. Uh, probably one going to end up in a lot of end year uh, lists. 
punk punk indie punk indie so um it's indie let's just say that it's indie all right okay this is a really good album you should check it out it has guitars it has melodies it's really good it's well structured songs it doesn't have a dud in it um, it's longer than uh, the Agar Boys, which is like six songs. But I mean, it's like it's 14 songs, but they're short songs. This is hard. this has it's like more of a long player, if you like. And yeah, get get it now because you know, and you can tell your friends. Yeah, I told you this was a good album uh, back, uh, you know, in uh, July. Really good. Highly recommended. I've read about it on. Um, and the Guardian and music recommendations from the Guardian are usually good. Uh, they're a little bit all over the place, uh, as in like you know, they, they cover a big spectrum, but um, they get things right. I think when 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 they they get things right, they get things right, <laughs> whatever that means. So yeah, that's it. That's my my update. Uh, I don't have uh, I have more things to show if I wanted because you know I haven't. Have been skipping a lot of updates but um yeah i had a few things to say 31 minutes wow who's gonna watch that god knows, god knows. so discourage me for next time uh and dislike the video or like it if you do subscribe to this channel because it's amazing and uh leave a comment if you like and i will um make sure that uh you get a response other than that have a good time, and I'll see you soon.